this table build will represent the first video in which I provide free plans on my website. My website is www.mynextprojects.com. You can check that out in the about section of my YouTube channel or you can click the link in the video. Now that I have all my boards roughly drawn out, I'm going to go ahead and cut the tabletop to their uh, approximate dimensions, which is going to be about 63 inches. I'm going to do about 3 inches extra on those. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those now. If you've seen one of my videos before where I do a panel glue up or something like that, like I did on the last table I built, you know I like to do the four, what I call the four cut method, which is, since I don't have a joiner, I, I like to cut, run this through there one time, I cut a little off this side, cut this side, cut this side again, and then finally make my final cut, cutting this side for a second time. So you get two cuts on each side and it straight, helps straighten out the board as you're going through these. So that's what I'm about to do is do the four cut method. So you're not going to see me do all of it because I've got to make, I guess, about 24 cuts on these boards. But I'm going to cut probably between an eighth and a quarter inch off each time to get down to my final dimensions, which is four and a half inches wide. So right now I'm making the first and second pass on the tabletop. I think it's real important to go ahead and get run each of these through there twice, I mean four times, to go ahead and get it squared up and make sure you have a good line. And now we're to the third pass. Just a little bit off each time like you can see here. No need to take off more than that. And now the final fourth pass. This is down to the final dimension, so you can tell these cutoffs are a little bit wider. After this, we'll be ready to assemble the top together with glue and biscuits. Here's what I did. I marked each of these boards, one through six, and I made a line on the end. This is going to be the top. I did both, in, both ends the same way. I know this is pretty square because I used my square here to square up this end make sure it looks pretty good. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down through here and mark every 8 inches on both boards. This is for the biscuits for, the, for my biscuit joiner. Now that I've marked the first one, I will go ahead and transfer these marks across all of the boards. And I'm just drawing a straight line all the way across. Simply going ahead and cutting the biscuit slots for the biscuits with my biscuit joiner. Really not a lot to this, just over and over again. Now that the biscuit slots are all cut, we're going to go ahead and glue. I put glue on both sides of each board and then added a little bit of glue into each inside of the biscuit so we could get a little bit better coverage. Hopefully it'll hold the table together better. Now just drive home the board. This is pretty simple, just going to be doing this over and over again until I get to the very top one. That roller came in handy for this project, along with the glue bot. I 
And now the last one finally got this table done. This tabletop done, I mean. Now just time to clamp it up and let the glue dry. Now that we have the top and clamps, we're going to move from the top down to the legs. We're going to go ahead and biscuit join the legs together and get these in clamps so that my 3x3 three three legs can start gluing up. Like I said, these legs are 3 inches by 3 inches and I wanted to add the biscuits to add a little bit of extra support and a little bit more strength while it's gluing. Once the glue dries, I'll go back on the table saw and cut these to the final width which will be, like I said, 3 inches by 3 inches. This first leg I glued up by itself, but then after this, in order to conserve clamps, I glued up the next three all together at one time. You'll see what I mean here in just a minute. One down and three to go. Lots and lots of glue. Don't forget those biscuits. And now I'm going to glue all three of them together right here. Now I just went to the table saw and cut all the rest of the pieces to their final width. They're already cut to their final length on the miter saw. I did that off camera, but now I'm just cutting these to the final width and squaring them up on the table saw. The final width for all my pieces except for the two runners underneath is three inches wide. Now it's time to get everything out of the clamps so I start taking the clamps off the top and then of course the legs. Next thing I'm going to do is run these legs through on each side to clear off the glue and anything that's else that's on there. The second pass though as you see right here is where I cut it to the final width which is three inches. It makes these three by three square. For this next part, I'm going to trim the ends, slot it down to hit my stop block, and cut it down. This is going to be 29 inches. So I did this on all four of them. Like I said, 29 inches long and just two cuts per leg. Now as we move from the legs and the top down to the base, it's going to hold the legs and the top together. Pocket hole screws are my friend here as I put lots of pocket hole screws in this project to help hold the legs together along with the top onto the table once it's completed. Once I get through drilling all these, these uh, pocket holes I'll be ready to go ahead and get ready to assemble the base. And here you see that right here. We're going to attach the rails to the legs with glue and of course the pocket hole screws. I'll use these new clamps I got to hold these in place while I screw the first screw in. And here on both of these end grains, I'm making sure that I really push this glue down in the end grain. Make sure it's got good coverage. I'm forcing it down in the grain and then I'm going to go back and add some more to each side. And now I'll just do the same thing for the other side and then we'll be ready to move on to the other side of the legs. As you can see, or maybe you didn't notice, there's a piece of plywood under, under the, each end and that's to offset it from the front of the leg. So off camera I caught that I didn't get the one side put on correct on the other one so I got that adjusted just in the nick of time. Now I'm just going to repeat what I did on the other side here. Here I'm going to use the clamps to hold it in place so I can drive the screws in and the screws will hold it until the glue dries. Pretty simple, not a lot to this part. And here's the final side. Next we'll be able to join the whole table bottom or frame together.
Now you can see here I'm adding the ends on. I have my clamp in place to pull it together and allow me to get the screws drove in here as well. Just a little bit of patience and a little bit of time and this gets done pretty quickly. You can see me using the plywood there to make sure I have the offset correctly. In the plans I planned for a quarter inch offset and here I'm only using an eighth inch. And this is going to finish up getting it assembled. I'm just going to put these pieces here in the corner and I'll put them with a couple of brad nails. Just for a little bit of extra strength here in these corners. I don't really know if this is necessary. I think it will add some strength to, the, to these corners since it's held together with pocket hole screws. But again, I don't know that it's necessary. And here you're about to see my awesome filming skills as I put the glue bottle or glue bot right in the way of the camera shot. Kudos to me. So what you see me here doing is just measuring to see how wide this is. And I can tell you I've already measured it once and these are off by about an eighth of an inch. And here's why. If I measure the inside here, we are the same on each end. I mean, on the dot the same. So what happened is, I, I, I tried to get these, I didn't have a jig, so I tried to inset these the same on all four posts, and I was off a little bit on one of the four, so we're off by about an eighth of an inch, so what I decided I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna cut these boards that go in here to length from where they're gonna go at. So what I did is I've got three holes drilled on this side and one on this side. That's just to try to keep it square. And when I decided for extra support on this bottom section, I'm going to put a couple strips of plywood here on the bottom. This won't be seen, it'll be on the very bottom underneath. And I'm going to glue and bread now this in place. Now I'm just going to add some glue into each of these joints and then I'm going to join it with three pocket hole screws in each side. I'm not too worried because this bottom's going to be painted and I'm going to go back and putty this so I'm not too worried about the pocket holes being shown. I had to use a shorter bit as you can tell from my normal one in order to get these in because of the center bar being so close to the edge. Here we are I'm just going to cut off the ends of the table. I cut off each end to square it up and get it to the final dimensions which is 60 inches. A couple quick shots here of me sanding. I did a lot more sanding than this but I just want to show a little bit of proof that I did sand. So this is a little bit of an interesting take of what I'm doing here. I got some masking tape. Not painter's tape, this is just masking tape and I'm taping off the area that I do not want stained to end up on so that I can glue the surface down later. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about here in a few minutes. Simply just adding stain to the top, brushing it on, then wiping it off. And this top looked great when I got finished. And for the most part I just rolled paint onto the, onto the base here. See, as you can tell it's still not completely assembled. And now you can see what I'm talking about. I'm removing the tape because I wanted the glue to have some actual wood surface to stick to. So hopefully that will allow that to happen. And now I'm going to go back and put glue in all those spots. And I did also put glue on the actual base as well. Now we're going to flip that up and put it on. And get ready to put the pocket hole screws in to hold it in place. You can see I have clamps around the surface here that is going to allow... Uh, that, that I had it lined up for the, the, bot, the base to fit in. 
Once I had it good to go, I went ahead and started screwing it together. Lots of pocket hole screws here, but I think, I don't remember how many there was, but there was quite a few that went into this. And you can still see the braces are not there yet. The middle braces, I mean. And that's what I'm adding in right here. I decided for this table, I would do this last. And this one was a little bit short. I cut it short. So I'm putting a little shim in there to hold it in place. And pocket hole screws here as well. That'll hold that in place. I think this is where the issue I had with my previous table where it cracked. Is because I didn't have these braces here in the middle. But I put some braces in this one and glued them in place and it should be fine, I think. If it's not, I'll let you guys know. I'm trying some wipe on poly for this tabletop. And I'm not going to do it on the legs. I'm just going to do it on the top and the edges. If you think it's okay to put wipe on poly on paint, let me know. And I'll... It'll let other users know as well, and it'll let me know for next time. And it's never too late to go back and add it later. I'm just going to pour a little bit out on, on the actual surface. Saturate my small cloth, and I got gloves on this time. And we're going to rub this in. All in all, I think I put like 14 to 15 coats on this. This is actually the first and second coat in this little uh, quick little video I'm showing here. Right here is where I started the second coat. I just put it on there and, and now I'm wiping it off. That stuff dries so fast. So the table is completely finished. I got it here in my kitchen. It looks good. It's much smaller or not as wide as my other table was. And I like that a lot better than it's not as wide. Thanks again for checking out another one of my videos. If this happens to be your first video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down in the, I think it's like the right hand corner down there. Uh, I think that's it for this video. So thanks again for watching. And as always, y'all will see me next time. Don't forget to head over to my webpage and check out the plans and other content on my website.